What's going on guys? I consider myself a jack of all trades, but my name's Jeff, so welcome back to Jeff of All Trades. Before we get started with this video, I just want to give a sincere thanks to all my followers. We passed 200 followers, small number for a small YouTuber, but I never thought I would get this far. All the positive comments and the positive feedback and what you guys want to see in the future is really helping me out a lot, and I can't thank you enough for it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, but let's get right into it. Today we're going to be going over the Browning Buckmark 22. I absolutely love this pistol. I say that with every gun because I think I love every single gun. <laughs> but this is very nice to be able to take to the range, practice your trigger finger, practice a few pistol techniques that you may have to work on with just using a 22. Save your money instead of buying that 9mm ammo, which we know is so expensive and hard to come by these days. We're also going to be going over how to take this apart, which is not an original field strip. It is a little bit more complex, but we'll get into all that. The cleaning of this weapon and the oil points as well. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, so today we are going over the Browning 22 Long Rifle Buckmark. Uh, this is an awesome gun, as I said in the intro. And what I really want to note with this gun, and one of the main reasons I picked this gun next, is of course ammo is still difficult to find, ammo is expensive. It's so nice to have because it is a 22. Some of the things that I like to do is drawing with this weapon. Now you can do this with any gun that you have, you can do it with any pistol that you have, and it's something super easy and free, as long as you own the gun or borrow a buddy's. But it's something that you can practice with, put the gun up, get sights on, put the sights back down. If you want to fire a shot once you do to see how quick you are at it, go ahead. You're shooting a 22, you're shooting a few cents instead of a few dollars in some cases. So that's what I love to use with this gun, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to make a video about this gun. Another thing I like to do is reloads with it. The magazine release is where all the other magazine releases are on pistols. It's going to get you into that muscle memory, and it's going to get you into the habit of dropping a mag, pulling a new one out, and putting it in the gun, firing two more rounds. So it's something fantastic to do with that. And then rapid fire. Of course, recoil comes into play when you're shooting a 9mm or a 45. But if you can keep your shots on target with a 22, that's something that's going to build muscle memory that you'll be able to use down the line with a 9mm or a 45. And when you want to spend a little bit of money on shooting the heavier rounds. So without any more waiting, let's get right into how to tear this thing apart. So as I mentioned before, this gun is not something that you're going to be able to take apart within a few seconds, field strip, put back together, clean, and be completely done with it. This isn't that type of a weapon. This isn't that type of a gun. This is something that shoots 22. It doesn't shoot anything that's too much more. It doesn't shoot anything that's too dirty. Um, it's actually fairly clean. And I can be honest with you, I've taken this apart maybe three or four times the entire lifetime of this gun. This is probably the oldest gun that I have. Uh, it is my father's, and he has never taken it apart. I've taken it apart just from being curious about it. Um, but it's something that you don't need to clean religiously. The Well, we'll clear it before we start handling it. To clear it, press the magazine release. The mag will slide right out. And then this is your slide right here. Pull that slide back and verify that there is nothing in that chamber. Pull it back a few times, and we are completely good to go, clear and safe. Um, if you did want to clean it and do it very quickly, you can just pull this slide back all the way, push this lever up, right here, this front one. That'll lock your slide in the rear. You can get a brush in here if you needed to, uh, and obviously my favorite thing is to run a bore snake right through that pull it out the front. You can access everything without taking this apart, but if you're curious, if something broke on it, uh, if you want to add a spring to it, if you want to change out trigger, whatever you want to do, you do need to know how to take this apart. Put that back forward. First thing we're going to do is take out these top Allen screws right here. There's two here, which are the same size. These are 3.30 seconds for an Allen wrench. And then there's another one right here that holds your barrel on and that is a 7 64th allen wrench 764 so the first thing you want to do is take this off you don't have to take this off uh, it is optional if you do just take the barrel off 
and this back one, this top piece will come off with it. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to take everything off anyway. Now when you pull these out, you want to make sure that you don't lose this right here. It'll focus on it. There we go. You see this kind of a lock washer in here that can fall out. And if it does, you need to make sure it's back in that inset before you put that Allen screw on or it won't screw all the way down and it won't be nice and locked on there. I'll see if I can get that off once I get this other one out. As you can see, that one stayed in there as well, but I will show you a little bit more of what I mean. If we can get it to focus, there they are. So you got one right here. That one actually will fall out. Put that on the paper so you can see it. So if those come out and they're not on the screws and you don't see them in there, make sure you find it somewhere on your table or on the floor because those do need to be in there. That one, that one wants to stay in there, so I'll let it stay in. So now that that's off, you can see your spring in there. Very easy to take out. Put a little bit of tension here, pushing towards the back of the gun, like so. And everything will come straight up. It's a lot easier without gloves, but I do like to wear gloves. I feel like you guys can see things easier. So that will come up and out. And it will also bring this piece right here with it, or it should. If I can get that to focus. It'll bring this back plastic piece with it, or it should. If this isn't on and it's still in the gun, make sure you pull that out as well. I'll show you exactly where to put it and how to put this back on there once we get in the reassembly of the weapon. For now, we'll put that down. This all comes out as one unit with this plastic piece here. It doesn't have to come apart and it'll stay together for you just fine. Once all that's done, your slide will come completely off. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is fairly dirty and is lacking oil. So I am going to put a little bit of oil and scrub that down as well. But for now, put that slide over. Next thing you're going to need to get the barrel off is your 7 ths This is for your barrel mount and this is to remove the barrel from the frame itself. Again, right there. This would be a lot better if I had some long handled um, Allens, but I don't. So this will have to do. That will come out completely. You'll see that pointed end, which will be important when we are putting the gun back together. This goes in first, obviously. If it didn't, there'd be no way to unscrew it. And that comes out, and then your barrel will lift right out. Nothing tricky, nothing to it. A little more in-depth than a regular teardown for a regular pistol, but that is the complete disassembly for the browning buck mark. All right, now that it's all taken apart, we want to give it a good cleaning. So you can see just by looking at this, you can see all this dirt in here, in here, that all needs to come off. You can see that it's actually pretty dry too. So we're gonna to want to give everything a good cleaning in here. Take a look, this is the barrel here. You can see all this build up right here. Wipe that off, we'll add some more oil to it too. And if I can get it down in there, you can see the barrel, how it does need some cleaning on there as well. So we're going to do that. I'm not going to be using a boar snake today. Um, I understand a lot of people don't have the boar snakes. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a boar snake. Uh, it's made by Hops number 9. Um, this one is a pistol one for 357, 9mm, 380, and 38. Uh, that's the size for it. When you take it out of the box, uh, it looks like this. I understand people don't have this, so I'm not going to use one this time. I have one for 12 gauge shotgun down to 22, um, also for a 223. Um, but it's very simple. You take this. This is the wrong size, so it won't go through. But you slide it down into the barrel, 
after spraying your snake with some cleaner, pull it down, pull the whole thing through uh, from this back end here to the muzzle itself, pull everything through and it cleans, it scrubs everything with these barbs that are embedded into it and then polishes the rest of the barrel with this fatter end here. So it's a fantastic tool to have, but I understand not everybody has boar snakes. Uh, or knows where to get them, so I'm not going to be using a boar snake today. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. And then we will clean the rear sight assembly. There's just a little bit of buildup in here. Uh, this is what goes over the barrel and the slide, and then this holds from the back of the gun, uh, holds everything together where everything should be. So you got a little bit of buildup in there too, so we're going to take care of that. Now we'll do some quick oil points. Uh, on the gun itself, on the frame, you can see in the trigger assembly here how dirty everything is. You can see the built-up dirt on there. Clearly, this has not been cleaned in a long time, uh, so let's go ahead and get that done today. What I like to use on these is either the Hops Number no. 9 solvent. Uh, this is just for gun care, rusted parts. It's for, you know, mechanics, everything else. Today, I'm going to be using Ballastol. This lubricates, penetrates, protects, preserves, everything, right? I mean, they're all pretty much the same in my opinion, but I'll be using uh, Balasol today. So this is just a simple spray. Go ahead and take this, spray it in here first just to get all this gunk cleaned up. Now, as this is cleaning, this is also lubricating, uh, but I will put a few more drips of oil just to be sure. So I will be using a uh, metal brush today. It's a little bit more abrasive than using your typical nylon brush. And because of all the caked up uh, gunk in here, I want to make sure I can get it all off. So I am going to be using this. You can see after just a few seconds of that sitting there, how everything's just kind of melting away off of it. So first I'm just going to take this, and in no real particular order, And when you're all done with that, you can go ahead and take some of these cloths here. These are just uh, the uh, cotton squares that come with any cleaning kit that you buy. You probably got one for free when you bought the gun anyway. Go ahead and put that in there. Go ahead and push down with some pressure. It'll really get on in all those nooks and crannies. Uh, it's already looking brand new, isn't it? And there you have it, completely cleaned. Oh, look at the difference, like night and day. So it is really important to take this apart, even if you don't field strip it like you do your other weapons uh, frequently to look at stuff, it is important to get this thing back to where it should be. That's all for the slide. As you can see, I got a little bit of splatter over here, so I'm gonna actually take this and put it out of frame, make sure it stays clean while I clean these other parts. Next thing, since it already got pretty dirty with that overspray, let's do the barrel. Now the only thing you really want to do on the barrel is this lip right here, where the round gets chambered into the barrel itself, slides up on that. You can see this here. You want that to be as clean as possible to make sure there's no issues there. I got a little bit of gunk here, and then obviously the back here of the chamber, and then uh, inside of that barrel we're going to get that cleaned. So let's do the barrel first. That's going to be the greasiest job. If you've ever bought a gun new, you've probably gotten one of those small cleaning kits that come with it. That'll come with everything you need. Or you can buy something like this from a Dick Sporting Goods, Target, uh, Walmart. They Well, probably not Walmart anymore. But they all sell these cleaning kits that have for different calibers, different brushes, uh, everything else, attachments. Uh, they usually all come with cloths. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Just something basic that I know everybody has or should still have from their gun purchase. So first I just put this handle... You always want to pull your metal from this part of the gun towards the front or the muzzle. You always want to pull through. You never want to push it through this way. You never want to push it through and bring it back. That's how I was always taught to do it uh, when I was in the service, and that's the way I've been doing it my entire life. If you do it a different way and 
send me a message and say, you know, you're doing it wrong. It has no difference doing it the other way, then uh, that's good. You can go ahead and do it that way. This is the way that I like to do it. This is the way that I was taught how to do it. So that's the way I'm going to teach you how to do it. I do like to take a little spray and put that on. This is just your bristle cleaner that when you pull through, it's going to get all that stuck on dirt off of there. Give that a little spray just to help lubricate and break apart anything that might be in there. Pull from the back to the front of your muzzle there. Pull it straight through. Take this off. It really is no harder to do it this way than the other way. And if there's any chance that it might be better, why not do it this way, right? Take it and pull it through. Let's do it one more time for good measure and then we'll scrub it out with some cloths and see if it made a difference. Like I said with the boar snake, you do one or two pulls with the boar snake, it does the same exact thing as this and the cloths uh, with eliminating those steps. So I do recommend getting some of those. Take this off. Now we want to scrub that inside. Take one or two of your cloths that came with your kit. You can also buy these in bulk. Uh, Amazon, stuff like that sells them. Just go ahead and uh, fold it in half. Pull a corner through here. It'll look just about that. Go ahead and add a little bit more spray to it. You don't have to go eat, uh, crazy with the spray. So go ahead and push this through. Pull it out. It'll be a tight fit. It's supposed to be. You can see all that dirt that's on there. Go ahead and take that apart. Shove it through. Pull it through again. If it was a fairly dirty barrel like mine was, I'm going to take this and uh, redo it. I'll just fold it in the opposite direction here. Get some clean cloth on there. Go ahead and pull it through that hole. A little bit more spray. Do that one more time. It is supposed to be tight, so that is okay. And it's okay to have oil in there. One more for good measure. All the way through. Now I'm going to take this one. You can see how dirty that is. You can see how much cleaning this gun needed. And I'm going to do one more thing here. Maybe a little bit of overkill. But I'm going to run a nice, clean, dry cloth through this barrel. This one has no oil on it. We're just going to clean everything out of there. You can see how we're getting there. It's not nearly as bad as it was. We'll do one more and then hopefully show you the results. And if we take a look, look at that difference. Shiny, clean, reflective way better than it was it's exactly what you want that's it for the inside of the barrel now let's just take this scrub it up a little bit scrub up the back in here and get some of this built up out of there just take a little bit of spray Unfortunately, my video did go out there for just a second, uh, but I did end up even getting this rust off of there uh, from where that was sitting. It's always good to get that stuff off. It looks brand new again. All this looks fantastic, and it looks like we're ready to go. The inside of the barrel still looks phenomenal. So we are ready to go with that piece. Again, I'm going to put it to the side and move on to the next.
Now this here is your recoil spring. So this is what makes everything rechambered and makes it a semi-automatic. Uh, it doesn't look too dirty. Doesn't look like there's much really wrong with it. All I'm going to do, spray a little bit of balsteros on here. And then just simply give it a nice rub down with this cloth. I'm also not going to add any extra oil to this. That balsteros is going to do what it needs to do and keep everything operating smoothly. And this section here is where the spring attaches to the back of the gun. And I am going to clean this because it looks like it has quite a bit of buildup on there. So let's go ahead and give it a spray and a rub down. No need to use a brush, just throw it in your cloth here. Scrub it with your fingers. And there we have it. And the last thing is going to be the rear sight assembly. The only thing I'm really going to do with this is focus on this inside section here. You can see it's got a little built up dirt. Pretty simple. I'm just going to take a little bit of spray, just like everything else. I'll use my nylon brush. We are good to go. Now this has turned out to look like a brand new gun. It's going to look fantastic and work even better than before once we get it all back together. The next thing I do want to do is add a little bit of oil to this gun. I did clean everything off and this step is optional. I'm going to be using hops number nine, but if you take a look at the balisteros that we used, if you take a look at the ballistol that we used earlier, it does lubricate uh, the weapon. So this will be fine just using this. If you rub everything off as aggressively as I did, I do recommend adding more oil to it. I don't recommend adding so much oil that it leaks out of the weapon. When I put this on, as you'll see, I'm going to put a little bit on and then I'm actually going to wipe it all off and you're going to see why. The oil will actually stay on there after it's wiped off. In these scenarios, less is definitely more. On this middle rail right here, I'm just going to put one drip, just one dot. That's all it's going to take. I'm going to take my finger, rub it up and down. Then I'm just going to take the residual that's on there and run on these side rails here. A lot of friction going on there where it's rubbing on the gun. You want to keep it oiled. Once I'm done with that, like I said before, I am going to take a towel and just give it a nice light rub to rub off all that excess oil. You got to think of the oil like a glue to a point if you put too much on it. You got this thing dripping in oil, it's going to attract more dirt and it's going to make it stick more than it's going to help. Now after I did that, you can see how everything is shiny. And if you look at the right angles, you can actually still see the oil that's on that gun where I put it. That's all you really need. Don't be afraid to wipe it off. Please be afraid to put too much oil on these. I'm not going to oil this as we spoke about. Uh, this is just the spring. It is fairly clean and using that bell saw is all that I'm going to need on this. This does not have movement once it drops into the gun, uh, just the recoil spring itself guiding that slide back and forth. So I am not going to be oiling that. The only thing else that I am going to oil, some people may not do it, but I like to oil this little ramp right here. Just put a little bit down so when those rounds are getting chambered into the barrel, it's going to have a nice easy guide all the way up. I just put a very tiny bit on there, wipe it off. And that is all for the top of the gun. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and clean the frame of this gun. You can see all the built on dirt that's on here using a clean cloth. It's hard seeing black on black, but this thing needs to be cleaned. So we are going to go ahead and clean this as well.
All right, now with all that done, you can see the difference on there. You can see if I take the cloth, no dirt, no grime. You can, if you notice, deep into here, if you wanted to take this entire gun apart with pins and everything else, you could go into a deep, deep clean. We're not covering that on this channel. We're just covering your basic cleaning and oil points for this gun. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about anything in there. I'm worried about everything on top, everything that could cause an issue. This is your trigger right here, that gold. And if you did notice, all I did was take this, shove it down in there, take the smaller end, and just kind of scrub up against that trigger. The uh, dirt that you see in there is not actually dirt. That's just pitting and wear and tear from this trigger being in there. Probably a poor trigger from the manufacturer as it is. Uh, this was not an expensive gun, but it definitely does what it needs to do uh, on the range or for self-defense if this is something you're going for. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that because self-defense with a 22 is isn't going to do anything. But hey, teach their own sometimes, right? You can have your own opinion, as can everybody else. So I'm done cleaning this. I'm going to go ahead and put a few drops of oil. My rule of thumb on this channel and anytime I clean a gun, look for the wear points. Where there's wear points, that means there's metal on metal, and that's something that should have a little bit of love. We can see some up here. The wear points, this is where your slide goes back and forth. Your barrel attaches right here. So your slide's getting a lot of action on these rails here. Up here, it's rubbing quite a bit. Of course, these faces as well. A little bit here on this hammer, and then on the other end. So this is a very small gun. I am just going to use one drop on this side and one drop on that side, and then just rub it in on all points. And you can see that is as little oil as I use. It is not very much. And you can see how much that distributes throughout the rest of the gun. And on top of that, we are going to be wiping it off. Go ahead and rub that on there. I'm going to use this other side here. I'm just using my finger. Like I said, you can go ahead and use a cloth if you want. There you go. And go ahead and take your cloth and wipe it off. I would complain that the only thing worse than no oil at all is way too much oil. I may be alone on that. There you have it. You can still see the shininess of those rails, how that oil is soaked into there, and a little bit down in here too. There we go. Perfect. It's exactly how I want it. And now the reassembly. First thing you want to do when reassembling, go ahead and grab your barrel. You're going to put everything back the same way you took it off. So go ahead and take that barrel, grab this screw that has a little pointed end on it, and put that pointed end down into the hole. And go ahead and start screwing it in. And again, you're going to want to grab your 7 64ths Allen. If you have one with a T-handle that goes past the barrel, it'll go a lot quicker and a lot easier. This is all I have, so that's all I'm going to use. Go ahead and tighten that down. Your barrel is attached. Next thing you're going to want to add is the slide. Go ahead and take your gun. Slides right on in no particular way. It'll kind of snap up to where it's supposed to go. Make sure it's seated correctly. You can hear that snapping in there. And this is the important part here. If you look, if you look into the back here, you can see this hole offset towards the back of the gun. That will match up with this little plastic piece that your spring is going to sit into. You can simply slide this on first and it'll sit right there where it's supposed to. It's not going to go down any further or fall away. But that's how that piece should look sitting in the gun. Go ahead and take your spring. 
and you're going to want the spring side to be up. It won't go in this way, it'll only go this way. Slide your spring into that plastic piece there, right into that little hole I showed you. Spring side up, go ahead and compress the spring, and it'll fall right into place there. It should be slid with the plastic meeting up with the top of the slide here. That pin should be going through that hole, and this is how it should look with that spring put back into place. Everything should be nice, flush, and tight. Once that slide is back on, the next step is to put the rear sight base on. So you're going to go ahead and take this, make sure the sight is to the rear of the gun, set that in place, and this is your last chance to ensure that these locks are in here. There should be one there, and there should be one in the back. I popped mine out early, so earlier, so I'm going to make sure I put that back in there. It doesn't snap in place or anything, it just sits there. That's why you need to be careful and make sure it's in. Now before you put these screws in, you also need to notice one is smaller than the other. You can see the difference in the height. The longer one is going to go on the back of the gun. The shorter one goes to the front through the barrel. Let's go ahead and take that short one and put it in. I like to use my fingers to get it started to make sure there's no cross threading before I use a tool. Go ahead and take your 332 Allen wrench. Screw that long one into the back. Go ahead and screw that short one into the front. Tighten them down. They don't have to be crazy tight. You can put Loctite on if you want. There's not much recoil with this gun, if any. It is only a 22, so you really don't need to hammer down on these. And I really don't think it warrants using a Loctite for this gun. Once it's all said and done, go ahead and take it, slide it. And that's pretty much the most function check you can do because this trigger does not activate without a round in it. Take a magazine, empty of course, put it back in, and you are ready to go. And there you have it. How to take apart the Buckmaster, what it's used for, and probably why it's not as easy to take apart as you earlier anticipated. Yes, you have to take a few Allen bolts out, but you can get this entire gun apart to make sure it's being cleaned properly and being maintained properly. As I said in the video, you have to remember, this shoots a 22. This is a lot smaller round than your regular 9mm, your 45, your 223. So it's not going to expel that much gunpowder, and it's not going to get so dirty that you have to take this home and do a deep clean or know how to take it apart. But if something goes wrong, or if you're just curious like I am, it's a really good thing to know. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment down below what you want me to do next. And as always, stay safe. I'll see you in the next one.